Today we're going to be talking about how we take um, standard, let's just say construction progress monitoring photos or site monitoring photos. So any photographs um, which essentially have been taken around a particular area of interest, um, and in this case an orbit. So how we take these 20 to 30 photographs and process them into um, you know, decently looking 3D models. This is not to say, uh, you know, th these models are are not going to be used. These models are not going to be used in a uh, professional or surveying capacity. But um, this is just another way to repurpose already collected data and turn them into something that you know might provide some more value to your clients, uh, your team, or your customers. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to check out some of these photographs. I mean, they're pretty standard. Um, what we have are 20 megapixel photographs that have been taken from a Mavic 3 standard. Um, so this is not the mechanical shutter version, this is the electronic shutter version. And what this is, is a simple orbit around an area, um, building, or object of interest. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these 30 photographs and we're going to go ahead and use a photogrammetry and 3D modeling software called Metashape to turn these photographs into a workable 3D um, a workable 3D data product that you could share online in a browser. So let's go ahead. We just looked at the standard photographs. And let's go ahead and select these 30, drag them over here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to Align Photographs. In this case, I believe it's set to high accuracy. Um, I find better results if we set our accuracy to highest towards the beginning, and we're gonna let we're gonna uh, keep all the default settings default besides the accuracy. So we're gonna go ahead and press process. This shouldn't take too long. Generally, the aligning the alignment of the photos is the uh, fastest process um, during this essentially data processing technique. And we're going to go ahead and wait for that to finish. So <clears throat> that has taken about uh, 45 seconds to complete. And so what we're looking at here is the essentially pre-aligned photographs um, in a very, very sparse point cloud. Um, and for those of you who don't know what a point cloud is, um, essentially a bunch of points that are plotted on an X, Y, and Z axis that are supposed to represent physical things in the, in the real world in this case, since we were taking a, uh, a scan or photographs of a particular area. So after we've gone ahead and aligned photographs, we're going to go optimize camera. Um, I like to uh, select adaptive camera modeling fit and estimate type tie points uh, uh, covalence. Estimate tie points covalence um, as my options, but you're free to do something else. All right, now that we've optimized our photos, we're going to go ahead and go directly to building a dense point cloud. In this case, we're going to take our quality to high, um, and we're going to go our depth filtering, filtering to moderate. Um, if you want a higher quality model, we can go aggressive, and we can also uh, build an ultra high density point cloud. But in this case, and for time's sake, we're going to keep ours at quality high and a depth filtering of moderate. And we're going to go ahead and let that process out. <clears throat> has just finished processing. I believe the time was about two minutes and uh, 50 seconds, so almost three minutes. And so right now, we're going to go ahead and inspect the quality of the point cloud. Um, for me, at first glance, it looks like the majority of the building, besides under the vegetation, near the vegetation, uh, there are is very good point coverage. And so we're going to go ahead on this side. So, and we can also see that um, 
on this side of the building, and especially when it starts getting into the crevice here, we're losing information or we have less data um, than other, other places. But I would say, you know, all in all, pretty sharp for only 30 images. Um, and I think this is going to turn out to be a very nice model. All right, so quite dense. I wonder what the density is. And so we're also, I mean, you know, photogrammetry just naturally has, a, has an issue with um, vegetation. And so essentially this white area um, over toward the bottom right, now in the middle of my screen here, uh, it's, you know, it's very difficult for these kinds of cameras to pick up individual tie points on leaves and vegetation. So we'll see how that turns up in the model. But I'd say, you know, for a, for a first pass and only 30 images, looks like a really great point cloud. Anyways, I digress. So what we're going to do from here is if we want to then turn this into a tiled model, um, we have to go ahead and save it. So we're going to save this as um, progress monitoring. And let's go ahead and save this in our documents. All right, now for the fun part. We're going to go ahead and process, um, take this point cloud, and then process it into a 3D tiled model. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our source data as our dense cloud. Um, and you know what? We're just going to set our facing megapixel count to medium. Um, and we'll see where that lands us here. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and fast forward until uh, this is finished for the final result. For the model, the process. And we're going to go ahead and view it inside Metashape. All right. So we see a little warping on the model. But still, for 30 photographs, I mean, it's pretty good. Look at the back here. All right. So what we're going to do next, um, you know, to be honest with you, uh, I, I love the Metashape software, but the ability to manipulate the model in um, in Metashape, it is it's kind of clunky. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and export this model as a tiled model, and then we're going to view this uh, on the web. So we're going to go here to export, export tiled model, and we're going to call it um, call it progress monitoring text format jpegs coordinate system wgs84 that will work very lovely with our cloud all right from here we're going to be all right so from here we're going to go ahead and upload um we're going to go ahead and upload this this data online to our cloud platform or what we use for our cloud platform All right, so we're going to go over here to manage data. We're actually going to create a new project. Um, we're going to call this um, Oakland Location. Oakland, California. Pew, pew, pew. And the approximate location of this area is here. We're just going to say we flew that last Thursday. All right, we've gone ahead and created our project. We're going to go here to add a file. So we're going to go to add 3D tiles. We're going to call it Oakland Location. Um, we went to process it today, but we flew it on the 23rd. And there we go. So progress monitoring.zip. And it's a 63 megabyte file, so it should take no time to upload. It has finished uh, uploading and tiling, so we're going to go ahead and view this project. So since we didn't upload any two-dimensional data, we just uploaded 3D data. We're going to go ahead and check out our project. 
All right, so let's zoom into the location. So this is common. Um, what we're going to do here is we're just going to adjust the height of the layer. There we go. That's pretty close. Let's press save. All right, so um, we went ahead and uploaded this tiled model up to the cloud. Um, and this is where we can really view it, you know, uh, a little more intensely here. Or uh, view this model with a little bit more um, freedom. All right, so when I'm zooming in here, you know, the quality of the model, I would say, is pretty good for the amount of photographs that we took. Um, what we're looking at here is we're looking at some standard photogrammetry distortion. Um, you know, it, it, photogrammetry works by taking uh, contrasting colors and, and, and basically, basically contrasting pixels and tying those points together to create a 3D model. Um, and so it really struggles, especially, I mean, you know, it's such a small sensor, four thirds, micro four thirds from the Mavic 3. Um, but it really struggles with the finer details. And if you really want details like this, you have to get close up, um, you know, or use just use just a different technology. And so, you know, what I like to call this, you know, this is more of a reference model. We're not using this in a surveying or a surveying application. Uh, you know, we're not guaranteeing that this is accurate within, you know, a few inches. Um, you know, this is just for, you know, just the ability for a, uh, a customer to go ahead and manipulate the model in ways that you wouldn't be able to do a photograph. And so we, so what's going on here is, uh, you know, we're looking at um, moisture and water on the roof that hasn't dried up from the from the latest storm. Let's go ahead and check out the stairs here. Wow. So it decently distorted, but I think it's done a pretty good job. <clears throat> this concludes our video um, for how we take standard site monitoring photographs, um, anywhere from you know 20 to 50, and turn them into a decent looking 3D model that you can go ahead and share with your clients in a cloud or browser application. Uh, then again, we used Metashape, went ahead and aligned our photographs, optimized uh, our sparse point cloud, built our dense point cloud, then went ahead and built our 3D tiled model from the dense point cloud and then uploaded to our Airmetrics cloud. So uh, feel free to comment below if you have any questions or applications you'd like me to potentially go over. Um, and then uh, it'd be great uh, if you could like or uh, like this video or subscribe. That really helps a small, uh, small and budding channel like 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 my own. Thank you very much, and have a great day.